So I would like to thank all my dear younger brothers who are there as chairperson and I would like to thank my younger brother Rutul and uh, the men for inviting me here. I call Hyderabad as my second home, uh, sorry, Ahmedabad as my second home. Sorry. So uh, I will be quickly going through the talk uh, which is assigned to me and I will be having very minimal text so try to see what I want to communicate. Uh, the topic which has been assigned to me is CVD risk and GDM. This is really interesting. We all, ha uh, we all have been hearing since yesterday about gestational diabetes, so I will be not going into this. This is, we all know, CVD is the most common cause of death overall in the world. In India also, 29%, 26% death are due to cardiovascular disorder. And hyperglycemia in pregnancy, we all know, is most prevalent in Southeast Asia, where we live. So this actually adds to the salt to the wound because one in six live births occur to women with some form of hyperglycemia and how to impact the, the cardiovascular milieu, let us see. So we all know the predisposing factor for GDM. These are the pre-diabetes, family history, obesity, age more than 25 and race. And this was the man who actually conceptualized that the body's susceptibility to lifestyle diseases was programmed intrauterine. But on digging down the literature, I found that he is not the first one. The first one was Garb Upanishad. Actually, Chanakya told this in 230 BC that even as the unborn baby is in the womb of his mother, these five are fixed as his life destiny. First is his lifespan, his activities, his acquisition of wealth, knowledge and the time of that. So we were pioneer in discovering this fact that the mother is actually the decider of the destiny of the kid. Now GDM again impacts two lives as we all know because G diagnosis of GDM identifies women at high risk of future diabetes and associated metabolic problems while maternal hyperglycemia is associated with development of metabolic problem in offspring. We all know this and how it occurs, it occurs due to a cascade of pathway, obesity and gestational weight gain, glucose intolerance, insulin resistance to add upon it, dyslipidemia which is there. And gestational diabetes uh, leads to increased supply of glucose and fatty acids to the fetus, developmental programming and fetal adaptation. And what it leads to is cardiometabolic disease development in the offspring with age. Also in the mother, when the maternal climate is susceptible and genetic predisposition is there, the mother develops gestational diabetes. Then occur micro level DNA changes, DNA methylation, histone modification and the changes in non-coding RNAs which leads to in utero programming or reprogramming of the genetic milieu. Then con comes the diet and lifestyle. We have then li large for gestational age baby which leads to metabolic syndrome, type 2 diabetes, obesity and it is transgenerational. So that is why it is imperative for us to treat GD. Right. Now the gestational diabetes induces placental genes as I have told you. This is the whole mechanism where placenta is the obligatory target of environmental changes and major changes in expression profile of placental gene occurs. There is upregulation of interleukins, leptin, TNF alpha receptors also. So this is the cascade which leads to risk of obesity, DM and CVD in offspring. So this is intergenerational and that is why it becomes much more important. Now this is very interesting, NCD risk in mother, it is actually there, we all are predisposed to non-communicable disorders due to our genetic makeup, but once the lady has GDM, the risk increases, she shifts the trajectory from low risk to high risk and with second GDM, she shifts more over higher to much higher risk trajectory. If the lady preconceptionally controls the diet, lifestyle and the body composition, the corresponding NCT risk in first offspring becomes less. It is not obsolete, it is less. But gradually during the life course, what the kid adopts in his or her lifestyle decides the fate or future of the kid. So this is very interesting when mother is planting the seed and the baby is nourishing it to get a disease. Now there are various studies on this and this is a very interesting article on gestational diabetes and risk of cardiovascular disorder. I was able to find it and this clearly shows that all these studies show an increased risk of cardiovascular disorder when the, uh, when the mother has GDM. Now this is a very interesting read, a gestational diabetes mellitus and risk of overall and type specific cardiovascular diseases a population and sibling matched cohort study and what it showed that GDM 
also increase the CVD risk via changes in cardiac structure. So there are structural changes when the baby is born to a GDM mother. Secondly, there is a very, uh, very, very popular study which is young adult cardia study. It found that history of GDM was associated with impaired left ventricular relaxation, lowered left ventricular systolic function and increased left ventricular mass. So this is all documented. And actually, this is actually showing that there is an increase in hazard ratio when the mother has GDM as compared to a non-GDM mother. So it was seen that the history of GDM has increased risk of overall CVDs and varied increased risk for common specific type of CVDs also like myocardial infarction, heart failure, hypertension, peripheral artery disease and CABG and 23% of increased risk could be explained by the subsequent type 2 diabetes which develops. Again this cardiac study which is very popular it shows that women with previous gestational diabetes showed a graded increase in the risk of coronary artery calcification associated with worsening glucose tolerance. And then women with a history of gestational diabetes has a two-fold higher risk of CAC across all subsequent levels of glucose tolerance and the midlife atherosclerotic CVD risk among women with previous gestational diabetes is not diminished by attaining normal glycemia, normal glycemia after pregnancy. So once you have a GDM, you have a scar and this scar will remain forever. Look at this graph. The lady achieved normal glycemia, but still the proportion with CAC is much higher in this orange, which is gestational diabetes uh, females as compared to the blue, which doesn't have gestational diabetes. If you have prediabetes, again, you have a high risk when, when you have a gestational diabetes. Incident diabetes surprisingly showed a lesser trend when the the patient was having gestational diabetes as compared to non-gestational diabetes. This is again a UK biobank study which showed a long-term cardiovascular outcome of gestational diabetes. It was a prospective study and it was uh, done in around 13,000 women and it clearly shows that the survival analysis of cardiovascular outcomes. When the lady has GDM, you can see the graph A, the cumulative incidence per thousand person per year on the myocardial infarction, overall cardiac risk, and development of uh, peripheral artery disease, they are all higher in GDM mothers as compared to the female who are not GDM. This is again occurrence of incident cardiovascular outcomes during follow-up and the incidence of total cardiovascular outcome by age at the enrollment. And you can clearly see the GDM again being a culprit here. So GDM itself is a risk factor for cardiovascular disorder for future for mother as well as for offspring. So it Again, this study, the maternal diabetes during pregnancy and early onset of cardiovascular disease in offspring, it was a 40-year follow-up study. It was a population-based cohort study and it clearly showed that the cumulative incidence of early cardiovascular diseases onset amongst the offspring exposed versus unexposed to maternal diabetes and you can clearly see the incidence is much higher in the exposed offsprings, those who were having a mother with GDM. Cardiovascular consequences of gestational diabetes. There are various studies which are there that which shows that women with GDM are at high risk of premature CVD. Women with a history of GDM at higher prevalence of metabolic syndrome also. And over 10 years, women with GDM had more non-invasive cardiac diagnostic procedures also, which again indicates there is a high risk for cardiovascular disorder once you have GDM. Again, this paper shows that gestational diabetes tied to artery damage years after pregnancy. There are various papers which shows that maternal glucose levels during pregnancy and childhood adiposity in the hyperglycemia and adverse pregnancy outcome follow-up study. This is again a paper which predicts the risk of childhood overweight which will again contribute to the increase in fat and increase in metabolic syndrome. Again a paper which shows the joint association of maternal BMI and glycemia with childhood adiposity and this is actually the place where we can act because it is not the end of the tunnel. We can correct it because diabetes in pregnancy is actually a critical window of opportunity. We can correct this. There has been various papers on this which advocate actually to use GDM as a window of opportunity. If we act right, if we control the GDM, at least we can prevent something. So this is again our own Indian paper which shows gestational diabetes mellitus is a window of opportunity. A FIGO has, uh, has given a position paper for action by healthcare practitioners for prevention of non-communicable disorders by intervention in the preconception period. So we need to act 
and we need to advocate about the preconception counseling because once the patient has GDM, he has some or other risk factor for a future cardiovascular risk in the mother or the baby itself. We all know managing GDM prevents three things, acute complication, let it be maternal or fetal, secondly, the maternal metabolic disorder in future, and thirdly, the fetal metabolic disorder in adulthood. So we should manage GDM or if possible, by preconception counseling, we should prevent GDM. This is actually the key note message of this conference that female gender is the key of diabetes prevention and it starts with a healthy pregnancy and it should start with a healthy pregnancy. The pregnancy should be healthy so the mother should not have GDM because either a low birth weight or a large for gestational age uh, fish, uh, baby in adult life will be having a higher risk for obesity, diabetes, hypertension and CVD and the risk will be intergenerational so he will pass on to the future progeny also. That is why maternal health is the link to the NCD epidemic we are having right now in India. This is all we know, we have studied since two days, the management of hyperglycemia and pregnancy, I will be not dwelling into detail. These are all the targets which various people have given, but my target is very simple, a baby should not realize that her mother has any sort of hyperglycemia. So the GDM mother should not be there and we should do proper preconceptional counseling, we should advocate it as much as possible so that all the future progenies should be prevented. This is how we should act, we should focus on hyperglycemia in pregnancy, we should advocate preeclampsia, pregnancy, obesity, nutrition, we should, we call it PONY, we should give guidance about post-pregnancy, long-term maternal child health, we should implement fetal growth management methods, project support, cost effectiveness and prediction and prevention of preterm birth. We should all do this to prevent uh, uh, GDM and NCDs. Now, women with a history of GDM are at increased risk of future diabetes, predominantly type 2 diabetes, as are their children, and transgenerational transmission occur. This slide should be always kept in mind. It is a window of opportunity for primary prevention of NCD and cardiometabolic disorders. And I will end my talk by just this line that the cost of inaction against NCD outweigh the cost of action for any country in the world today. With this, I thank you all.